Welcome back to the Dying Mark channel. If you're new to me, thanks very much for watching. Uh, I really hope you like the video, and if you do, why not consider subscribing and hit the like for the algorithms. I'm trying to get as many people as possible to start handmaking jewelry in the correct way, or what I believe is the correct way. So uh, yeah, welcome. Welcome to La Familia. This is Diamond Mounter. Uh, today, I'm just re-uploading uh, a small segment of a previous golden nuggets of jewelry making wisdom video because I felt like it was actually really good information and I want the video just the advice about melting um, metal up at home or in your workshop if you don't have the proper equipment just melting it up by cutting a groove in a charcoal block I think is really useful for people who especially people who are starting out and don't know about these little tricks of the trade you can you don't have to buy all the expensive equipment you can get by on some cheaper basic things so I want to highlight the fact about you can melt up metal on your own without crucibles and special high-tech soldering equipment and big gas bottles and all that. Uh, so I wanted to highlight that by giving it a little video of its own. So it's a short video. Um, some of you may have seen it before, previous subscribers who've seen my Golden Nuggets ones. Uh, basically my Golden Nuggets series are just quick little tips and tricks of the trade just to highlight things I feel are useful and maybe beneficial to people starting out in the trade. I will put a link to it at the end of this video so you can click on that if you want to see the whole thing. Also it's in a playlist called Golden Nuggets and you can see all the others if you if you like what you saw. So there's a few more going as well. Got more ideas for those coming soon. Uh, yeah, stay tuned. Thanks for watching. See you at the end. Charcoal block, using it for melt ups. See that space? I've totally worn that out. So maybe I'll cut a new one this side. It does destroy your charcoal blocks doing this. So it's not ideal. You should use proper crucible and all that stuff you can get, but I don't have one and I don't really miss one doing this. For the amount of work I do, uh, this is fine. So I'll show you how I cut a groove in my charcoal block for melting bits in. What I do is I take this large ball phrase. I don't know what that measurement is. It doesn't matter. Just come on, come on. Uh, call it eight mil that's an eight mil ball on there but just whatever you got this big take that then what you do get a bin or a box with a plastic bag whatever put it right in front of you hold that don't go too close to the edge because when you're when you're putting a lot of heat on that it does burn away the charcoal a lot you can see it's gone flat and the reason I hold it over the bin is the amount of dust that comes off it. And it's very fine dust, so I don't have any fans blowing on you or even a window open. Um, maybe even don't even breathe. If you don't want this dust in your lungs, you don't want it over, over everywhere else as well. So, um, yeah, not too close to the edge. And I'm just going to do a line about there. Right, I'm holding it in the bin more. It's kicking up dust quite a lot. This is a Japanese charcoal block, much smaller than the ones you get in the UK, and like twice the price, but it's lasted so much longer. It's much more solid somehow. All right, see I've got dust everywhere, but a lot of it's gone in the bin. Gently just push that dust out. Don't blow it, just push it out with a brush. Now that groove is what I'm going to be using for melting bits in. Just a couple of things I would recommend if you're doing this. I recommend, not essential I guess, but I recommend having some kind of block under this. This is like a cheapy replacement for charcoal block, but they're not as good. Um, but I use it as a stand. It stops charcoal getting all over my heat plate on my bench and then it's just a nice flat surface and I was earlier making an 18 karat pendant and I needed to get solder underneath so that perfectly flat top and that sharp corner is really useful I could have it hanging over the edge and get heat underneath um, something charcoal tends to go rounded on the edges and it's obviously loses its flatness um, anyway chuck your little bits of metal in there uh, I recommend standing up when you're doing melt ups just in case it pops or spits which is something never happened but uh, it's possible a little air bubble can pop and uh, it spits metal at you, you want to be able to jump back out of the way. Uh, obviously, chuck or block or something comes apart and then molten metal falls this way, you just want to get out of the way. 
and then deal with it. Don't want molten metal landing on your body because I imagine uh, it would do a lot of damage before you get it off you. Right, so I've only got this crappy thing for soldering, so uh, it's slow to melt up. So it's not ideal, but I'm, I'm making it work. Put a bit of flux on it, probably got a bit too hot there. Helps it flow. Ideally the metal should be clean in there. If you've got some old bits that are all dusty and greasy, maybe even ultrasonic them or put them in the acid or something before you melt them up. You want as little uh, contaminants in there as possible. And what helps it flow, you can um, Dab your borax on there. You can see this torch is not really good for melt ups. It takes a long time to get it hot enough to melt. I could probably just about melt gold with this, but platinum just wouldn't even bother trying. No way. Move the heat up and down, try and get the whole thing liquid. Ideally, you want it to move, then you know the whole the whole piece of metal has gone liquid. So um, yeah, that's melted. And I know some jewelers will melt it on a flat bit. They'll get a pair of these and then they squash it and hold it there, uh, and so it kind of go solid in a nice, useful, long, flat-sided shape. I don't recommend doing that because you're changing the shape of the metal as it cools down really quickly. And you can cause like internal little fractures and cracks because obviously the metal's going from liquid state to solid while you're moving it and it can muck it up. You're far better off having some kind of groove where it melts at the shape you want and then just let it sit until it goes solid. I let it cool down a bit. I don't like chuck your things in the acid when they're too hot because you're spitting acid everywhere and I don't think it's good for the metal either so just let things cool down in their own time at least a minute or two put it on something metal it'll cool down a bit quicker uh, and then put it in the acid and here we are at the end of the video I told you it was a quick one but yeah that's it that was uh, I went through the, the whole process of getting your charcoal block the technique I use for cutting it like keeping the dust to a minimum so if you it's possible to make a right mess of it where you get dust all over your hands and all over everything so definitely hold it in a bin or even if you don't want it in your bin like put it in a box in a plastic bag and hold it quite deep in there because the dust is very fine it seems to be quite a sticky dust as well so just goes everywhere if you don't contain it so yeah look after yourself with the dust don't breathe it in keep it contained uh, stand up when you're soldering you don't have to have to but it's recommended because you can jump back out of the way if something spits at you or you know charcoal block cracks or something and you get metal coming towards you you just want to get out of the way it will go solid very quickly it's not hugely dangerous a tiny piece of molten metal but yeah if you just don't want it spitting on you or getting on your clothes or even getting on a workbench then your bench skin is going to burn through it on the floor it's just uh it's, you got to take precautions and just ask yourself what if to just consider consider what could happen if something went wrong and look after yourself when you're making things because uh making jewelry takes many years to learn it to a high level so you've got to look after your eyes and your fingers obviously uh yeah so that's it so thanks for watching um stay tuned plenty more videos coming soon and that's it diamond matter see you next time bye bye